and Rice here in the top of the first inning and so far the crowd is uh, disappointing but hopefully there's a traffic jam outside and they're having a little trouble getting in meanwhile a reminder that the hard-hitting Kansas City Royals will be at the stadium for a big four-game weekend series July 21st to 24th highlighted by New York bus service Yankee photo album night and our good buddy Ed Aragoni, all fans attending the Yankees Royal Games on Saturday, July 23rd, will receive a 1983 Yankee photo album with full color photos of all your favorite pinstripers, including two of the newest Yanks, Don Baylor and Steve Kemp. That's the Yankees and the Royals, July 21st to 24th, and New York Bus Service Yankee photo album night, Saturday, July 23rd. Well, Dave Rigetti has completed his warm-ups, winding of flips to Robertson, to Smalley, to Campaneras, back to Rigetti. We're ready to go. Jerry Remy stepping in to lead off and ready to lead off for our group, Bill White. All right, Scooter. Rigetti trying for his 10th here this afternoon. He's won nine, lost three. This is the second time he has faced the Red Sox. He was a loser back on June 24th, gave up Five runs on seven hits and five and a third inning. So he's pitching to Jerry Remy. And the ball game is underway. First pitch to Remy. He's a fastball. It's too high. Ball one. Remy batting 249. No home runs. 25 runs batted in. Campanera shortens up for him at third base, and so does Mattingly at first. Brigetti's 1 0 pitch to Remy. Swung on and missed. It's what it was. Yankee outfield. Panala playing near the line in left field in shallow. Winfield over toward the left center and also in close and the right fielder Steve Kemp a bit in right center and playing shallow. One one pitch to Remy. Fastball is a call strike two one and two. Steve Palermo is a home plate umpire. Rick Reed is at first base. Jerry Newdecker at second base and Al Clark over at third. The count one ball two strikes on the left handed hitting of Jerry Remy with Wade Boggs on deck. Brigetti over the head with the one-two pitch. It's high two and two. Bill mentioned the Red Sox have taken two out of the uh, three games played so far. We should probably say Jim Rice oh. has taken two out of the three games. Four home runs for the big uh, left fielder. Two-two to Jerry Remy. Swung on and fouled back. And Brigetti gets new baseball. Eddie Hills coaching third base for the Red Sox and Tommy Harper coaching at first base. Final game of this four game series and the Yankees final game before the All Star game. 2 2 to Remy. Swung on and fouled back up against the screen. Cal remains two balls and two strikes. This year's All Star game at Comiskey Park. You're playing All Star game there? Yes, as a matter of fact, I did play an all-star game there. And that was the year that Ted Williams went back for a Ralph kind of fly ball and broke his elbow, left elbow, leaping and hitting the auxiliary scoreboard out there. Brigetti is 2-2 pitch to Remy. Swung on and missed. Got him with the high fastball. Terry Remy goes down on strikes for the first out. So Dave Rigetti fans Remy and that'll bring on Wade Boggs. You know he threw them all fastballs Bill never went to an off speed pitch. That's his 78 strikeout. Rigetti leads the Yankee pitching staff in strikeouts. He has struck out 78 now. Ron Guidry has 65 strikeouts. And Shane Raleigh has struck out 62. Here's Boggs. He's tough to fan. Batting 361. No home runs. 34 runs batted in. And he takes a fastball. It's too high. Ball one. On deck is Jim Rice. And he's been a one man wrecking crew for the Red Sox in this series. 1 0 pitch to Boggs. Breaking ball in there. Called strike. It's 1 and 1. Yeah, Rice has not had a. Well, no homer here is cheap unless you get it right down each line. But he has, he's hit him a left center and right center. 1-1 one, one pitch. Check swing inside and high. They check with third base umpire Al Clark. Did not go too far. Two balls and a strike on Boggs. Now you've been around here quite a while. Have you seen many, as many balls fly out this ballpark? No, never. This, series? this whole year, I can't believe it. Here's the 2-1 to Boggs. Swung on a miss, two and two. 
One out, nobody on, no score just underway from the stadium. The Yankees and the Boston Red Sox. A big 4th of July giveaway here at the stadium. A lot of Yankee caps. Andres. Here's the 2-2 uh, two, two to Boggs. Oh. Ball strike three. That's ball got him looking on the outside corner. And they're two outs. And here's Jim Rice. Jim Rice has six base hits and 14 times at bat through the first three games. Four of those six base hits home runs. And the fastball is sliced foul into the seats off the right side. Strike one. Rice batting 299, 22 home runs and 58 runs batted in. Brigetti working quickly with the one strike pitch and he's high with it, one and one. Rice leads the American League with a 22 home runs. And he leads the American League and runs batted in with 58. Ron Kittle, that fine rookie for the White Sox, right behind him in both categories. Kittle has 18 home runs and 55 runs batted in. Ball is fouled off right side, just short of the upper deck. One and two on Jim Rice. Well, Rigetti's challenging everybody with that fastball. He threw one breaking pitch to Boggs. That's all, but he tied up Rice on two good fastballs. Getting has struck out the first two and has a one ball, two strike count on Rice. He gets a sign, kicks and deals a one two pitch. Just missed outside, two balls, two strikes. Fans reacting to every Rigetti pitch here. Yankees trying to even the series up a bit the two games apiece. Two, two to Rice. High ball three, three and two. On deck is Tony Armas, the center fielder. Now Rigetti decides to take a walk on the back side of the mound. He'll go to the rosin bag. He'll mention the Yankees two and a half games behind the Toronto Blue Jays. Yankees in fourth place now in the American League East. Here's the payoff pitch to Rice. Inside, ball four, and Rice walks. And that'll bring up Tony Armas. The Blue Jays have won 43, lost 33. Baltimore game back, they're in second place. Tigers two back. And the Yankees five games over 500. They've won 40, lost 35. They're two and a half back. Red Sox four, Cleveland, uh, Milwaukee five, Cleveland nine and a half. Here's Armas batting 241, 18 home runs and 48 runs batted in. Rice not a big lead at first. He's being held by Mattingly, and the fastball is a called strike to Armas. A day like this, you don't like to see anybody walk anybody, but I don't think it's too bad an idea to walk Rice every time he comes up. Every Joe, time? Hey, Joe McCarthy's theory, never let the big man beat you. Swing and a miss by Armas. No balls, two strikes. I mean, I remember one game, he walked Ted Williams four times, and he made his pitcher that day, I forget who it was, might have been Gomez, who didn't have a knuckleball, throw them all knuckleballs. He told him before the game, I don't want this man to hit a fastball today. Why did he just roll it up? No, that's making a travesty of the game, right? I wanted to. You don't want him to hit. Well, he could have hit him, too, you know. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's the easy way to put him on. <laughs> One ball, two strikes on Armas with Rice at first base. Two outs, no score in the top half of the first inning as Rigetti sets. And the pitch. Swung on a miss. Rigetti strikes out the side. No runs, no hits. A walk and a man left after one half inning of play. The Red Sox nothing, and the Yankees are coming up.
Pro players are available at all metropolitan area Model sporting goods stores. John Tudor ready to pitch to uh, Bert Campanaris, Don Mattingly, and Dave Winfield here in the bottom of the first. William? All right, Scooter. Campanaris batting 320, no home runs, four runs batted at. The Yankees had Neto scheduled to play, but he has an eye problem. And Campanaris is playing third, and Don Mattingly, who had been penciled in the leadoff, moved down to the second slot. So it'll be Campanaris, Mattingly, and Winfield against the left hander. John Tudor and the first pitch to Campanaris, but it fouled back on the screen. Burt trying to push the ball to the right side. Oh, it's no balls and a strike on Campanaris. Tudor's won five, lost four. One has only started against the Yankees at Fenway this year. But it fouled again off first base. That'll make the Yankee dugout. No balls, two strikes on Campanaris. By the way, William, this is the 207th. Happy birthday to uh, the United States of America. That's right, 1776, right? Remember those days well. Pitch is high, you reincarnated. Huh? Yep, and it's a Yankee Doodle Day, somebody wrote down here. One, two, pitch to Campanaris. Line, base hit, left field. Campy around first base, he'll hold as Rice's throw goes into second. So Campanaris leads off with a single. See that so often, guy tries to bunt a couple of times, fouls him off and misses him, then gets a base hit. And here's Don Mattingly. Mattingly hit his home run in Boston off Tudor, pulled it down the right field line. So he's facing Tudor here with Campanaris at first base, nobody out. Don batting at 265. There goes Campanaris. Pitch is high. Throw down a second. Won't be in time. <laughs> Campanaris got a walking lead. Stole second. He got a walking lead. Even hesitated a step. That's his best way of stealing bases. And Tudor, even though he was looking right at him, didn't throw over there. So Campy has stolen his third base of the year. He's also been caught three times. The pitch was high to Mattingly, so the count is one ball and no strikes. No score playing the bottom half of the first inning. Now Tudor sets. And backs off and time is called. Now we're ready. 1-0 pitch to Mattingly. Outside as he faked the bunt. It's two balls and no strikes. They're playing Mattingly straight away in the outfield. 2-0 pitch. Swung on, lifted to left. Rice started back, now flips the glasses on, comes in and makes a play. And Campanaris has to hold at second base. And there's one away. Dave Winfield, the batter. Winfield batting 244, 13 home runs and 46 runs batted in. Dave will represent the Yankees at this year's All-Star Game in Chicago. He'd be the only Yankee, right? Now Ron Guidry has a bad back. He's been scratched, and uh, Tippy Martinez of Baltimore will take Guidry's place. Dave's leading the American League in game-winning runs batted in. And Tudor checks Campanaris. Pitch to Winfield. Misses inside. Ball one. I see where Reggie Jackson's trying to get out of uh, appearing. He's got the uh, bad ribs, and he said he's hitting only 214, but there's been no official word as yet. Or they're going to let him get away with it. I mean, get away with it. Well, there's a lot of players that would rather have the three off days. Not you or me, but a lot of other players. Pop foul off first base. It's out of play. One and one on Winfield. Well, maybe his ribs are sore. I think they are. <laughs> you think they are? 
you know, I but think there's some doubt. No, I think Reggie's well, Jackson's a little ego, ego with the batting he, average. Yeah, you know? but he wants to be in the, he, he wants to be introduced. That red yeah. light goes on. Okay. 74 million people watching. <laughs> yeah, right. He wants to be there. I but hope he is. Count a ball and a strike on Winfield with Campanaris down at second and one away. Tudor's pitch. Swung on and missed. One ball, two strikes on Winfield. Dealing on deck is Lou Pinella. Late start here because of the festivities. Parachutists bringing in the American flag. Chuck Mangione. Very good. And the pitch misses inside, two and two. Chuck will probably come up he sometime during does, the ball yeah. game. He's a great interview. E. He's a Yankee fan, right? Oh, yeah, really is. Two balls, two strikes on Winfield with Campanaris down at second and one away. Tudor sets. 2-2 two -two pitch. Outside, three and two. I don't think this crowd's disappointing, Scooter. This is going to be around 40. I know, but I thought they'd pack every seat. There's all the giveaways. Some beaches around here, you know. Yes, I know it. Here's the three two pitch to Winfield. And it's high, ball four, Winfield walks. Let's take a 10 second Lon Jeans timeout on the New York Yankee Radio Network. Lon Jeans is the official timekeeper of the 1984 Olympics in Los Angeles. Campanaris down at second base. Winfield on at first with one away, and Lou Pinella's a batter. Pinella batting 326, two home runs, 13 runs batted in. We're still in the bottom of the first, no score in the game. Don Baylor exercising in the on deck circle as Tudor sets. And a fake throw back to second base with Remy sneaking in behind Campanaris. And Campy had to slide back in. No throw from Tudor. Both the second baseman, uh, Remy, and the shortstop, Hoffman, shorten up a little bit towards second. Now the set. Remy once again sneaks in behind uh, Campanaris, and this time Tudor backs out. And Pinella decides to take a walk as time is called. Don Zimmer coaching third for the Yankees, and Yogi Berra over at first base. As Pinella's back in, and Tudor's ready. Checks the runners. And the first pitch to Pinella. Misses outside, ball one. After the All-Star break, the Yankees open up in Kansas City against the Royals. Then on to Minnesota. Then back home. 1-0 to Pinella. Swung on line right to the shortstop. Hoffman, he'll go over to second base. Touch up, and they have the double play. Campanera is four stops behind uh, Lou Pinella. No runs, one base hit, one man left on base. At the end of one, the Yankees nothing, the Red Sox nothing. There's one thing Rachel Stevens does well. Uh. Oh, riding a bicycle, isn't it? Uh. Tower diving, isn't it either? What Rachel does do well is drive. So well, she qualifies for a Century Special Auto Policy, which rewards good drivers with good rates. So good, Rachel has money to help pay for her flying lessons. If you're a good driver, call Century, where all's well even when all isn't.
Well, I got just one more birthday, Bill White. Top off the day. It's Jonathan Trapp. Now, he'll be 16 on our off day Thursday, July 7th. And I had mentioned that's my daughter Penny's birthday and John Gordon's birthday on July 7th. But Jonathan Trapp will probably be at the Motor Vehicle Bureau at 9 Thursday getting his learner's permit. And that's a hairy experience if you got kids just getting ready for to the get their permit. Well, are you going to announce that when he passes, you're going to congratulate him? Yes, on the if air? he passes. But it took me three times to get my first license. Bad at parking. Horse and buggy? <laughs> no, but it was the old stick shift yeah. with the clutch, the old Ford Model A. <laughs> I'd get back the horses up. Whoa, gee, all. Yeah, that was there easier than cars, Bill. <laughs> Here's Dwight Evans leading off against Dave Rigetti in the second, and Rigetti gets a breaking ball in for a strike. No score. We're in the top of the second. Evans, Nichols, and Stapleton, three right-handed batters, do up against the Yankee left-hander Dave Rigetti. And Rigetti's one strike pitch to Evans. It's a low one and one. Dave struck out the side in the first. Although he walked Jim Rice, he got Remy Boggs and Armas. And he now has 80 strikeouts. The 1-1 one -one pitch. Called strike two. Fastball got the outside corner. A ball and two strikes on Evans. Yankees playing Evans straight away. There are four pitchers in the American League who have won 10 or more games. As the fastball is high to Evans, it's two and two. Rick Honeycutt of Texas leads with 11. Dave Steve of Toronto has won 10 along with Rick Sutcliffe of Cleveland and Ron Guidry. Here's the 2-2 two -two to Evans. Swung on and missed, got him with a breaking ball. Guidry, uh, Rigetti strikes out Evans. And that's the fourth strikeout for Dave Rigetti. He's pitching like Gidry pitched about, what was that, 1977? 78. Gidry struck out all those people. 125 ball games. Here's Reed Nichols, a designated hitter. Whoa! Chuck Mangione! I can hear that flugel horn. <laughs> Holy cow, how you doing, Chuck? <laughs> oh, you Reed Nichols great. takes high ball one. Chuck, how you doing? Bill and I really enjoy. Yes, that's that's I a tough job you. playing the national anthem with uh, with the flugelhorn. Yeah, and the echo. And the now thing wait a minute. One thing, White. That you pitch is high. You mentioned he had the Italian colors on. He's got a few too many in there. Yeah, Some of them are not. We got everybody. Right? That's right. <laughs> 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 All right, I like that. I like that, Jack. <laughs> It's, it's two balls, no strikes on Nichols. <laughs> After all, the national anthem is everybody. That's shooter. right. You're right. Drill the right center field. Might be trouble on the runner's camp, but he'll get there and make the play. And there are two outs. And that'll bring on Dave Stapleton. Stapleton batting 214, three home runs, 33 runs batted in. Oh, uh, Rizzuto's checking out again. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Two outs, nobody on, no score here in the second. <laughs> no score in the ball game between the Yankees and the Bo Sox. And here's Rigetti's first pitch to Stableton. And it's taken for a strike. That was the first ball anybody hit off. He had five strikeouts. That's right. Ball, right? Yeah. yeah. You're gonna hey, you're gonna Look come up God. here, join us. <laughs> Oh, you just learn how to keep score. You got it made. It's another journey to a rainbow right here, right? <laughs> here we get it. He's ready. The one strike pitch to uh, Dave Stapleton. And it's high, one and one. We've got Chuck Mangione with us up here in the booth. He did such a great job with the national anthem. And that's tough with the flugelhorn. <laughs> one, one pitch. Change up. Take it low. It's two and one. Chuck, that Phil Peppy was very upset with the way we were pronouncing his name. Oh, good. I thought Phil came up with something, huh? Yeah. <laughs> he, he spelled it phonetically for yeah. Phil, and Phil has done a little bit better job. Well, do you say he should know anyway. You say spaghetti or sp spaghetti. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Ball's pop foul off first base. No play for the first baseman. That's Don Madley. Cannot get to it. Chuck, you've been following these uh, three games with the Boston. Jim Rice has had a uh, heck of a series. Well, he sure has, you know. But I'll tell you, the spirit in the Yankee clubhouse is one of 
cool confidence. Well, they're, it always has been. They're, they're, they're amazing. And I've never met such a wonderful group of guys with so much talent and yet so humble and really enjoy playing baseball. They're going to do it. <laughs> All right. It's two and two on uh, Dave Stableton. Two outs, nobody on base, no score in the game. Top half the second inning, Rigetti's pitch. Breaking ball swung and a miss. And that'll retire the side. Three up, three down. We've been talking to Chuck Mangione and Chuck K. Good being with us. Thank you. We're going to play the national, the Canadian national anthem at the All-Star Baseball game. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> well, we'll be looking at you. Thank you. And at the end of one and a half innings of play, the Yankees nothing, Boston nothing. The name says it all. Lee Riders, the finest jeans with the authentic Western cut since 1889. So let Martin Brothers Fashion and Sportswear stores show you what Lee can do for you with their authentic 100% cotton denim jeans. Lee Twill Straight Leg Jeans in 12 colors and Lee New ESP Stretch Jeans. Yes, let Martin Brothers Fashion and Sportswear stores and Lee be your first choice. Step into a tradition with Lee Jeans at Martin Brothers Fashion and Sportswear stores in the Bronx, Westchester, Elizabeth, and Bayonne, New Jersey. Well, we got a very important birthday here that we missed on July 2nd, Bill White. Papa Mangione, up in Rochester, 73 years old. Oh, man. Happy birthday. Yes, sir. Little pasta, little vino that night. Little Chianti. <laughs> says, Chuck says they celebrate all year long. Well, that's, that's the way great. to do it. Yep, here's Don Baylor against John Tudor, second inning, a scoreless ball game, and the curveball misses low to Baylor. It'll be Baylor, Weininger, and Kemp against the left-hander John Tudor. So far, the story's been Dave Rigetti. He has struck out five. Fastball to Baylor's a strike, one and one. Tudor with the 1-1 one, one pitch to Baylor. And it's low, two balls and a strike. Butch Weininger is on deck. Baylor batting 298, eight home runs, 32 runs batted in. Tudor working quickly with the 2-1 pitch. Swung on and pop foul, that'll come back toward the screen. Newman gets a late jump. Now he's coming back, but uh, he'll run out of room. Two balls, two strikes on Don Baylor. Pitch two and two on Baylor. And Tudor gets a new baseball. Looks in at Newman for a sign. Now he's ready with a 2-2 delivery. Outside ball three, three and two. Campanaris led the ball game off with a single. Then he stole second but was doubled up when Pinella lined to Glenn Hoffman the shortstop. Payoff pitch to Baylor. Swung on and fouled back. And the count remains three and two. Oh. Chuck Mangione, he's got to leave. He's going to draw the uh, winners for all the gifts today. Baylor just won the left, but Rice has room coming on. Still digging in now with the glasses down. He makes a catch for the first up. And we'll see Chuck downstairs. Let's hear it. Oh. <laughs> hey, 
Hey, Chuck, chill alone <laughs> the men's Amari. Okay. <laughs> Butch Weininger in. And the first pitch to Butch, batting right-handed, is taken for a strike on the outside corner. No balls and a strike. You know, two balls hit to left field, Bill. Rice had to come in. I yeah. know they were not hit that well, but still. Well, Rice is not playing shallow. He plays a deep left. And the breaking ball is outside to Weininger. It's one and one. Butch batting 307, five home runs, 19 runs batted in. One one pitch. Line, one hopper, through Bob down the left field line. Weininger around first base. He'll go to second. And Rice's throw will be into third base. That was a tough chance for Boggs. That could very well be a double. I mean, that was a short. Up. Oh, error five. Man, that was a tough error. Who was that uh, coach at Gonzalez? What was his first name? It said good field, no hit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. I'll think of it in a moment. He's he always. A Cuban fella. Yep. But I think with Boggs, we got good hit. He's having some problems with the leather. But he can hit that ball. Oh, he can. So Weininger on at second base, a two base error charge to Wade Boggs, and that'll bring on Steve Kemp, the right fielder. Kemp is batting a 268, nine home runs, 37 runs bad in, and he takes high ball one. Kemp uh, shaking up a bit in the collision at home plate during the Baltimore series with uh, Rick Dempsey when he got cut down at the plate. Tried to bowl Dempsey over, ran into a lot of plastic and other <laughs> <laughs> catching gear equipment fouled back it's one and one don't see collisions at home plate anymore you what don't see collisions at home plate anymore no and that was one of the rare ones only because Dempsey got the ball in time you got to kind of sidestep and try and swipe tag him or you really get cream one ball, one strike on Kemp with Weininger down at second. One away, no score in the bottom of the second. The pitch is a curveball in for a called strike, one and two. You know, also, you see a lot of head first slides in the home, which I think is terrible. Way to catchers love that. Oh, yeah. Well, since they're not blocking the plate anymore, it doesn't make any difference. Yeah. So they go up and get the ball and come back and try to tag you. One, two. Hit on the ground, first base. It's a fair ball. Stapleton has it, throws to the pitcher, Tudor covering, and they've got uh, Kemp, and Weininger moves to third base with two outs. That put out three to one. Here's Royce Molly. The Yankee shortstop's batting 280, 10 home runs, 31 runs batted in. Weininger now at third with two outs. Tudor winds and deals to Smalley. And it's high, ball one. Weininger walking a big lead off third base. And he stops. Pitch is a called strike on the inside corner. It's one and one. Weininger went a long way down the third baseline. I tell you, if he had a little speed, he could have stolen home. Tudor took a big, slow, deliberate windup. Count one ball, one strike on Roy Smalley. Now the pitch. Swung on and fouled back upon the screen. One and two. Yankees nothing, the Red Sox nothing. Bottom half of the second inning. Tudors, one two pitch to Smalley. Hit on the ground off first base. It's a fair ball. Caught by Stephen right on the bag. He touches up there, and that'll retire the side. No runs, no hits, and there and a man left. We play two. Yankees nothing, the Red Sox nothing.
we go into the top of the third inning. Scoreless ball game. Only one hit in the game. The Yankees have that. That was a single by Cameron Harris leading off the bottom of the first. And Rigetti in two innings has struck out five of the six possible outs. One fly ball to right field by Reed Nichols. It'll be Jeff Newman, Glenn Hoffman, and then back to Jerry Remy, the top of the order here in the top of the third. It's a big ball game for the Yankees prior to the All-Star break. Told you they uh, trail by just two and a half games going into today's action. And that would be a nice, comfortable spot to be in. Everybody get three days off to uh, relax, get strong again. The pitch to Newman is in there, strike one call. Frank Messer has joined us. Well, happy 4th of July, Scooter. Yeah, thank you, Frank. We've been giving our greetings to... Whoop, did he check it? No, he didn't. He swung 0-2. Newman can't believe it. I can't either. The ball hit home plate. A uh, curveball that... Uh, there's the first base umpire, Rick Reed. He said he went around. Rigetti threw a curveball that bounced off the plate. We'll look at it again. <laughs> he stopped that swing. All right, but it's 0-2. Which side of the radio are we looking at? Oh, that's right. We got a monitor up here. I keep forgetting. Foul upstairs and out of play. High and deep down the right field line. So it's 0-2. Even the announcers enjoy a three-day respite, Frank Messer. Boy, you got that right. Be nice to go up in the mountains. Oh, yeah, through. that's where you're heading. The 0-2 delivery outside, one ball, two strikes. Great to hear from Lou Goldstein. Yeah, I'm going to go up and visit Lou yeah. and Jackie for the next three days. Paul Grossinger and the Edis family. Looking forward to it. It's worth it just to hear Lou Simon... Lou Simon. <laughs> Lou Goldstein do as Simon says. High and it's two and two. He's all excited. He's going to do a show down in New Orleans for the uh, mentally retarded, I think. Yeah, Special Olympics. Yeah, he is really excited about that. All right, two and two now to Newman. The pitch struck him out. They asked the first base umpire this time. He said no. He went... <laughs> further that time with his swing than he did the first time. He really did. But things even up. It's three balls, two strikes now on Jeff Newman. Rigetti's payoff pitch. Struck him out anyway. Holy cow, six strikeouts in just two and one third innings. Boy, Rigetti is strong. I mean, he, and he's striking them all out with fastballs. Yes. He's pumping that fastball up there. I really don't know. It's got to be mid-90s, wouldn't you say? It's got to be. Nobody has pulled the ball. Nichols fly to right. Even foul balls they haven't pulled. There's a strike to Glenn Hoffman, the shortstop. Hoffman hitting 252, one home at 20 RBIs. Rigetti rocks back, and the curve a little bit low, one of one. He's got a mean curveball. Mm. The 1 1 delivery. Oh, he swung at a pitch about a foot inside, a sharp breaking slider. Man, he is mean today, Frank Messick. He really is. This is probably the best I've ever seen Rigetti. Oh, boy. And the fans, of course, hungry for strikeouts now. The wind up. The pitch just missed the outside corner, two and two. Forget his last start when he pitched his first major league shutout against Baltimore. When was that last Wednesday? He didn't walk anybody and struck out eight men in that ball game. All right. Rags Rigetti winds. The pitch struck him out. Holy cow, another wicked slider down and in. His seventh strike out of the ball game. It's unbelievable. And that'll bring up Jerry Remy, who struck out leading off the ball game. 
He has struck out some tough men to strike out, Remy and Boggs, who are contact hitters. All right, Campanaris moves in at third. And the pitch to Remy fouled back and out of play, strike one. Greg Nettles was penciled in to start this game at third, but he has conjunctivitis. I don't know which eye, I forget which eye it is now. Which is I good. don't recall. Usually, if you get it in one, though, it will spread to the other. Uh huh. Pitch is low, one on one. Conjunctivitis is highly contagious. Yes. Also called pink eye. That's why they used to say when we were kids in school, if you looked at somebody that had pink eye, you would get it. No kidding? Oh, yeah. It is very, very contagious. A 1-1 one, one delivery outside 2-1. That was, of course, an old wives' yes. tale. It was, you can't get it by looking, but it was... Uh, it is. It's... Remember what... A couple of years ago, Oscar Gamble was out for a while, suffering the same thing. It's very annoying, and if you're hitting up there, you don't want to have that blinking and kind of blurred vision. The 2-1 delivery. Bouncer hits a short. Smalley throws in time to get him. Nice play by Smalley as Campanaris had cut right in front of him. Almost blocked his vision. Three up, three down, end of two and a half. It's the Red Sox nothing and the Yankees nothing. It's Sears Auto Centers. Come into Sears Auto Centers for super savings and service you can count on. Save on batteries, mufflers, and Presto and summer coolant. Save 23% on Sears heavy-duty shocks. They're on sale for just $9.88, fully installed. Sale ends July 23rd. Guardsman 21 bias ply white walls are on sale, like our p 155 80 d 12 A complete set of four tires is just $88 plus federal excise tax. Sears 50 batteries are $25 off. Regularly $64.99, they're on sale for $39.99 with trade-in. And you can always get a great buy on a Sears Lifetime Alignment. Just $49.99 and Sears will inspect and align the front end for as long as you own your car. And there's much, much more. So don't wait. Come in today and use your Sears credit card. It's your key to the store for super savings and great service. Yes, you can count on Sears, where we install confidence day and night. Available at most metro area stores. Well, you know, it's up there where the weather's nice and cool this afternoon toward upstate New York, listening to our Yankee game. Great Yankee fan, very great friend of mine, High Agents, is celebrating his birthday today, and his uh, son is here in the ballpark watching the ball game. It's a great day to have a birthday, I'll tell you. How about that? Born on the 4th of July. Yep. Andre hits one deep to left field. Rice going back. Now he stops. You know the ball's not carrying a left today, Frank. No, it really isn't. The flags are blowing in from right toward the left field foul line. By the way, Rice made that catch, but he started back as though we're going to be over his head and then stopped and had to come in to make the play. And Andre hit it right on the nose. One away. Now Campanaris, who singled and stole second his first time up. Pitch to Campy, bluffs a bunt, takes it low, ball one. First Very time up, he tried a bunch twice and fouled him off and single. Got something for us, huh, Messer? Mm-hmm. All right, the pitch, he takes a strike, one on one. That would have been a good pitch to bunt right yep. there if he'd wanted to. The Yankee School Board is brought to you by members only, makers of outerwear and spectator wear. The one-one pitch, a curve high, two on one. Minnesota five, Chicago two at the end of four. Detroit leads Baltimore four to one at the end of three. Todd Cruz has homered for the Orioles' lone run in that ball game. A little looper, and that's going to drop in right center field. Campanaris on with his second base hit. Campy just served that softly in the right center. Well, they had some acquisition at Todd Cruz, Frank, for Baltimore. Well, he's done a good job for them. Pittsburgh beat St. Louis 7-2 in the first game of a holiday doubleheader in Pittsburgh. Rick Roden got the win. Jason Thompson homered. Second game, Cardinals failed to score. The Pirates are batting in the first. Neil Allen against Jim Bibby. 
All right, Don Mattingly, the batter. Throw to first. Can't be back. Can't be got a running start. His uh, first stolen base. Now Tudor gets the sign. Another throw over there. Montreal leads Chicago six to one at the end of five and a half. Home runs Andre Dawson, Gary Carter, and Dawson again. He's hit a pair. Backing up the pitching of Steve Rogers, going for his twelfth win of the year. Other games are later starts. All right, and still another throw over there. The Yankee scoreboard has been brought to you by members only, makers of outerwear and spectator wear with the style, the fit, and the colors you'll want to wear everywhere. Look for the members only label that tells you it's the original at fine stores near you. And four in a row he's thrown at first base. And you don't usually get Campy when he is standing still. He likes to get that kind of walking, running start. Big lead. Here's the pitch to the plate. The curve is over. Strike one call. Mattingly flying to left field his first time up. Out Tudor sets. And a pitch out, but he was not going. It's one and one. Mattingly can sort of sit on a fastball, don't you think? You would think so with uh, Campy at first. All right, Tudor sets again as a throw over to first, and Campy's back easily. He really telegraphed that one. That was not his good move. Nope. Five times he's thrown over there now, trying to get Campanaris. He comes set. There's the sixth time, and none of them have been close. Fans getting a little upset. Mattingly steps back out. It's tough on a hitter when this happens. Try to get yourself psyched up and set in the batter's box. The pitcher keeps throwing it first. All right, he's ready. And there goes Campy. Good. Holy cow. Why did Mattingly swing at this? A pop-up. Campy's going to have to hustle to get back. They're going to double him. And they do. Holy cow. Campanaris had that bag stolen without having to slide. And Mattingly swung at it. Popped it up into a double play. 4-4-1 for the double play. No runs a hit. No errors. Nobody left at the end of three. Red Sox nothing and the Yankees nothing. One day, Clyde Heap surprised his wife by remodeling the family kitchen uh, with the family car. Then he surprised his partner by adding a new wing to the company offices and subtracting one from the company plane. Fortunately, Clyde's independent agent had all his surprises covered with insurance from Middlesex Patriot General, even when he surprised his neighbors by re-landscaping his backyard. <laughs> Middlesex Patriot General, a member of the Sentry family of insurance companies. And now let's take a 10 seconds Longines timeout on the New York Yankee Radio Network. Longines is the official timekeeper of the 1984 Olympics in Los Angeles. Scoreless ball game through three. The Yankees had the only two hits in the game, both owned by Burt Campanaris, the Red Sox third baseman. Wade Boggs has made one error. And now Rigetti will be pitching to Boggs, Rice, and Armas here in the top half of the fourth inning. Scooter. All right, Frank. 
Only two men have been able to hit the ball off for Getty, and both have hit to the opposite field. Nichols fly to right. Remy, a left-hander, bounced to short. Boggs struck out his first time up. And Rigetti's first pitch is high and tight, ball one. Rigetti already has seven strikeouts in the ball game. Three in the first, two in the second, two in the third. Rags comes back, and a drive to straightaway center. Winfield is there, backing up, reaches up. That ball was tagged. I'll tell you, he hung the breaking ball, I think, to him that time, Scooter, and he mm. jumped all over it. Very seldom when you see... Uh, Boggs even hit the straightaway center field. That's right. Most everything is to left and left center. All right, one away, and now Jim Rice, who walked his first time up. Another 4th of July birthday, Jim Bozian over in Hackensack, born on the 4th of July. What a day to be born on the oh, birthday of our great country. All right, Jim Rice. Told you had walked his first time up. And there's a high fly to right, but Kemp with plenty of room. Moving in under it, makes the catch. Two men are out. You always breathe a lot easier when you get Rice out. Especially the way he's hitting right oh, now. What a series he's had. Four home runs. He's had six hits in now 15 at bats in the series, and four of those six hits have been homers. What a display of fireworks he's put on. Tony Amas struck out his first time up. Two out, nobody on. And a bouncer hit slowly to third. Campaneris, nice bounce throw in time to get him. Good play by Campy. Again, three up and three down. And at the end of three and a half, Red Sox nothing and the Yankees nothing. Baseball fans, head for the ballpark in your own official New York Yankee t-shirt. Available to you now from Arnold's Soft Sandwich Rolls. Details on packages and displays of Arnold's Soft Sandwich Rolls at your grocers. And step up to quality at Food Town with Arnold Rolls and a full variety of your favorite fixings for picnics and barbecues, including frankfurters, fresh ground meat, salads, pickles, cold cuts, charcoal, soda, and paper products. For warm weather eating, step up to quality with your favorite foods at Food Town, the super supermarket. Well, it'll be Dave Winfield, Lou Pinella, and Don Baylor up for the Yankees here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. We talk about Rice's 22 home runs. He and Balboni lead the country, I think. Balboni hit his 22nd last night for Columbus, Scooter. Unbelievable. Steve Balboni. A mild-mannered giant just continues to powder that baseball. He's got to get a chance in the big league someplace. All right, Winfield swings and foul tips the ball. Strike one. High, he's been swinging at a lot of high pitches lately. Yes, he has. He's been swinging at pitches out of the strike zone high. Yep. Of course, that word gets around. The pitchers know it. Of course, yeah. all the Boston pitchers know it because they have seen him in these four games. The Bronx USA is number one in the Big Apple. They got a good brochure on the Bronx right here. Yankee Stadium included in that, of course. Great places to go. Guide to dining in the Bronx. Cultural organizations of the Bronx. Don't forget the Bronx Zoo. And the Bronx Zoo, that is one of the big features of the Bronx. Winfield hits a high fly. Didn't hit it well. Amos moving in and to his left. Makes the catch. One man out. You know, Rebecca took Mickey over to the Bronx Zoo about a week ago, and they really enjoyed it. Great attractions over there. Oh, it really, really is something. You know, they got an elephant ride. They'll let you, the kids get on an elephant and ride. No kidding. Yeah. They got a petting zoo over there. All right. Lou Pinella, who hit a bullet to the shortstop, was turned into a double play his first time up. Left-handed Tudor delivers to Pinella outside, ball one. On deck, Don Baylor. <laughs> Lou 
taking a lot of time between pitches. He's doing it more this year than ever before. Now he's ready. And the pitch is right in there. Strike called one and one. Lou turns around, walks out of the batter's box, comes back. Still not ready. He digs a hole and he fills it full of dirt and then he digs it again. Just can't get comfortable there, can he? No, looks like Lou might be getting a note from the American League office like Hargrove did. <laughs> the curve way high and outside, two and one. He steps out again, checks his spike shoe, knocks a little dirt out. <laughs> All right, the 2-1 delivery. Foul to the right side, back in the seats, out of play, two and two. Let's see what he does this time. He makes sure the umpire knows he's not quite ready. Now he's set. The 2-2 two -two pitch, foul upstairs and out of play, right over our heads. Looks like Lewis really backed off the plate now, Scooter. Yes, it does. I tell you, he does that, changes stances so often, according to who the pitcher is. Again, Lou puts the stop sign up. Doesn't want the pitcher to pitch while he's not looking. Now he's ready. And the 2-2 delivery. Foul to the right side, back in the seats out of play. And Lou will take another little stroll. Tugs at his batting glove. Check the attendance while he was looking around. Maybe he's got a new clause in his contract. <laughs> and again, the stop sign as he digs the hole a little deeper for the back foot. Now he's ready. And two to his 2 2 delivery. Foul back off the umpire. That hit Steve Palermo solidly with a foul tip off the mask. And it's still two and two. See, Palermo, as he opens both hands up, he still evidently works the plate without using a ball and strike indicator. That's very unusual. It is. All right, once again, the 2 2 pitch. Foul back on the screen, out of play. I've been told for you, you know, that, that as long as Palermo's been around, he has not used the indicator, which is very unusual. I have to wonder if one of the other umpires might just keep one in I, case. I would think so, because uh, there are some times when the scoreboard might be wrong and could be a big argument. Palermo, <laughs> Palermo keeps it in his mind, and uh, one thing I, you know, it's, I like a lot of things about Palermo, but one thing, after every pitch, he will indicate the count. ball strike yeah. count with his fingers, which is, I think, always good. Very good. How about Jerry Newdecker? He lets you know on each pitch. Yes. The pitch again hit deep to left field. Rice has got room, though. Back near the warning track at the 387-foot sign makes the catch. Now, yesterday, that ball would have been out of here. Yes, it would have been. That ball would have been in the visiting bullpen yesterday. Yep. Two men out. That'll bring up Don Baylor, who flied to left his first time up. There have only been two hits in the ball game, as Frank told you. Campanaris has both of them. Red Sox, no runs, no hits. They have made an error. The pitch to Baylor. Foul on an off-speed pitch right off the end of the bat. Strike one. Could have changed his speeds very well. Yeah. He Ian Rigetti, very smooth out there today. Curve way outside, one and one. Each pitcher has walked only one man, though Tudor has not struck out anyone. Rigetti has struck out seven. The one one delivery foul again off the end of the bat. One ball, two strikes. Indication Rigetti has thrown probably more pitches than Tudor oh, has. Oh, yes, absolutely. Two.
Two out, nobody on, no score, bottom of the fourth. A foul upstairs and out of play. On deck, Butch Weiniger. And the one-two delivery. Fly ball left center, but Amos is going to get there. He's calling and makes the catch. Three up, three down. At the end of four, it's the Red Sox nothing and the Yankees nothing. Chuck Mangione will draw the winning ticket numbers at this time. All of the winning numbers will appear on the scoreboard by the middle of the fifth inning. Please watch the scoreboard to see if you are holding a winning ticket. If you see your number on the scoreboard, Please remain in your seat, and a special officer will escort you to receive your prize. We repeat, if you see your number on the scoreboard, please remain in your seat, and a special officer will escort you to receive your prize. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everybody. John Gordon with you now as we bring you the top half of the fifth inning in the scoreless game here between the Red Sox and the Yankees and game number four of this four game series. And of course, the Yankees need a victory here this afternoon to square up in the series. Right now, they trail by two games to one. And the leadoff batter for the Sox will be uh, number 24, Dwight Evans. And he'll be followed by Reed Nichols and then Dave Stapleton. No score in the game, and the Yankees have the only two hits, both of them from Bert Campanaris, a single in the first inning, and Campy had a single in the third inning. Then a couple of base runners. Jim Rice was a base runner back in the first on a walk. Dave Winfield reached in a walk in the first inning. Butch Weiniger reached in an air. Those are other base runners in the game. Evans struck out his first time up. Rigetti through the first four innings of pitching. Has walked one and struck out seven. And the curve is inside. It's one ball and no strikes to count to Evans. Evans four for 11 in the series and currently hitting 232. 15 homers on the year. Swings and fouls one back to the netting. And the count into ball and a strike. Rigetti struck out Evans on a very, very good curveball the first time up. As a matter of fact, the breaking pitch has been a very effective pitch for Dave Rigetti thus far against the Red Sox. Here's the 1-1 one -one delivery. It's a fastball high, and it'll be two balls and one strike. Dave Rigetti seeking to become the second 10-game winner for the Yankees. Ron Guidry has won 10 while losing four. Here's a check swing, but Evans went around on it. Strike two, and it's two balls and two strikes. Forgetting his number four in the American League in winning percentage with a 9-3 record. California's uh, Bruce Keeson is number one. Two balls, two strikes, a count to Evans, and here's the 2-2 delivery. A fastball fouled way up to the upper deck off to the right, and the count is holding at two balls and two strikes. Now the Yankees and the rest of the major leagues are off tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday. The All-Star break coming up. The All-Star game to be played Wednesday night in Chicago at Comiskey Park. 
Yankees resume action against Kansas City Friday night at KC and of course we'll be there to broadcast. Here's the 2-2 delivery inside three and two. Yankees open a three game series against the Kansas City Royals Friday Saturday and Sunday and then a three game series against the Minnesota Twins and then they're back home on the 14th of July against the Texas Rangers 3 2 pay pitch swing and a missed strike three struck him out in a fastball eight strikeouts in the game for Dave Rigetti boy he is pitching some game here this afternoon. Well, Rigetti had eight strikeouts in his last start, the shutout win over Baltimore. And he had eight against Oakland back on the 28th of May, and when he beat the Athletics by a 5 to 2 score. Dave's career high is 11, and that was against the Boston Red Sox in the 1981 season. And you would have to say he certainly has a shot at that with eight strikeouts in four and a third innings pitching so far. Here is Reed Nichols, who is 0 for 1 in the game. He lines a foul down the left field line to the upper deck and out of play, and the count is a ball and a strike to Nichols. In the first nine batters that Rigetti faced and the first eight outs, Reed Nichols was the only Red Sox batter that did not strike out. He flied to right fielder Steve Kemp. And here's the 1 1 delivery. Change up wide. Two balls and one strike. Rigetti struck out the side in the first. Remy, Boggs, and Armas. Two in the second. Evans and Stapleton. Two in the third. Newman and Hoffman. Remy batting for the second time in the third inning. Grounded out short to first. Swing and a fly down the right field line. This one is curving foul. It'll be out of play. Chasing Steve Kemp had no chance to get it in the count holding it two balls and two strikes. No score in the game. The Red Sox and the Yankees in the Monday afternoon holiday special here. Good crowd on hand. Nichols batting with one down and nobody on. Two balls, two strikes. We're getting to the line, and here's the pitch. Curve, line foul past Eddie Yost to the third base coaching box. And it's 2 2 still to count to Reed Nichols. Well, the Red Sox are making a bid to finish strong before the All Star break. They're presently 38 and 37, one game over 500. There are only four games behind the division leading Toronto Blue Jays. 2 2, and here's Rigetti to the line on the pitch. Fastball, high and away. 3 2 and a full count. And the Yankees, of course, sitting in a very good position. They're presently 5 over 500 at 40 and 35. And trail the division leading Blue Jays by just two and a half games. 3 2 pay pitch inside ball four. Missed with a fastball. Nichols draws the second walk. Given up by Dave Rigetti. He's at first, and Dave Stapleton will be the hitter. Rigetti is listed among the league leaders in the American League. He's tied for third in the wins column with nine. He was number five in strikeouts with 77, but the eight that he has now, giving him 85. Puts him up into the uh, number four spot ahead of Lamar Hoyt. Here's the set and the pitch out, but the runner Nichols is holding, and it'll be ball one to Stapleton. Struck out swinging back in the second inning. Yankees nothing and the Red Sox nothing, and the Red Sox batting in the top half of the fifth. Dave Rigetti to the right handed hitting Dave Stableton. Nichols with the lead, Mattingly holding. And here's the pitch. Curve is in, and it's one strike to count. One ball, one strike. Shane Raleigh is scheduled to open the road trip at Kansas City on Friday night. Shane, seven and seven on the year after losing yesterday's game to the Red Sox. And he'll be pitching against Larry Gura. Rigetti up high for a ball and two and one. And Rigetti is scheduled to pitch on Saturday against Bud Black and Ron Guidry 
is scheduled to go on Sunday against Paul Splitter. Those are the pitching matchups for the Kansas City series on Friday night at Kansas City. Two balls, one strike. The runner at first is Nichols, and Rigetti will check him back to the bag with a pickoff move, and he's back safely. This is the first inning that Rigetti has been behind Red Sox batters. He was 3-2 to Evans and struck him out. 3-2 to Nichols, and he walked him. Now he's behind Stapleton, a 2-1. There goes the runner, and they got him picked off. Mattingly to second. The tag by Smalley in the out call. So Dave Rigetti erases the base runner with a beautiful pickoff move. 1-3-6. And out stealing will be Reed Nichols. Two down in the inning. And it's two balls and one strike to count to Stapleton. Now the Red Sox, who are not a running team, they have only 11 stolen bases all season long. That's the 13th time they've been cut down attempting to steal. Here's the 2-1 to Stapleton. He bounds one foul past the third base coach, Eddie Ost. And it is a 2-2 count now to the right-handed hitting Red Sox first baseman. So Dave Rigetti on a 2-2 delivery to Dave Stapleton. Should he reach, Jeff Newman would be next. And the pitch just missed outside with a fastball. And a full count of three and two. So Rigetti, who worked out of the very quick inning in the fourth, just five pitches, struggling some here in the fifth. Three-two to every hitter. Foul. This one hit down the left field line and out of play. And it's still 3-2 to Dave Stapleton. On a hot day like today, you don't like to see that pitcher go 3-2 to too many hitters. And Rigetti has been full count to all three that he's faced here in the fifth. Outfield play Stapleton straight away. Stapleton has five hits in the series. And he came in with an 0-for-23 slate, fighting a season-long slump. 3-2, pay pitch. Popped up in the infield, right behind the pitcher's mound. Campaneris, Robertson, and it's going to be Andre. Robertson makes the catch. Stapleton is out, and the inning is over, and that's going to be all for the Red Sox here in the fifth. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. And now through four and a half innings of play, it's the Red Sox nothing and the Yankees nothing. He's a lone representative in the All-Star game. Will be a starting outfielder Dave Winfield. Uh, Ron Guidry was chosen to the All-Star team, but because of back spasms, he was forced to relieve himself from the game, and uh, he will not be in uniform Wednesday night at Comiskey Park. 
Don't forget now the Yankees take on the Rangers for a four game weekend series to open their next home stand July 14th through the 17th. And the series will be highlighted by the annual Old Timers game on Saturday, July 16th. Don't miss seeing your favorite old timers, including the newest old timer, former Yankee Bobby Mercer, who will participate in his first game. Here's Butch Weiniger to lead off the Yankee fifth inning and swinging on the first pitch from John Tudor. He pops it in the air behind second base. Jerry Remy is out to uh, make the grab for the out. There's one down and one pitch, and Kemp is stepping in. And before he bats, let's take a 10 second Long Jeans timeout on the New York Yankee Radio Network. Long Jeans is the official timekeeper of the 1984 Olympics in Los Angeles. This is Steve Kemp who is 0 for 1 in the game. Swings and misses on a Tudor fastball. It came in on his hands and it is no balls in one strike. Kemp bounced out to the first baseman. Stapleton, he made the play to pitcher Tudor covering at the bag and is 0 for 1 in the game. Tudor right back and the fastball is down low. One ball and one strike to count. No score in the game. The Yankees nothing. The Red Sox nothing. And here's the curve that's in. Catches the inside corner and it'll be one ball and two strikes to Steve Kemp. This is Kemp's first appearance in the uh, Red Sox series. He's been out. Bothered by a bruised tailbone. Left-handed hitter against the left-hander Tudor. Curve is wide and two balls and two strikes. Yankees had a couple of base runners in the first inning about their only real threat. Here's a line drive off the glove of Stapleton, the first baseman. He'll not be able to make the throw to Tudor covering at the bag, and Kemp is going to reach. And it'll be a hit for Steve Kemp. Now Stapleton uh, was moving to his left, tried to play the short hop on the low liner, and the ball kicked off his glove into foul territory. When Stapleton ran it down, he was right at the uh, tarpaulin area. And he lost his balance momentarily and could not make a throw. Kemp has reached for the Yankees' third hit of the game. And Roy Smalley is going to be the batter. Smalley swings in the first pitch from Tudor. Pops it foul off to the right. Newman's coming over. He may have room. It's just out of play. It's beyond the Yankee dugout in the third row of the box seats. Chuck Mangione almost got that one. He's sitting down there enjoying the game at the moment. It was part of his uh, party that is with him that uh, caught that souvenir baseball. So it's one strike to count to Smalley. Roy bounced to the first baseman Stapleton unassisted his first time up. He hit a ball right to the bag. Stapleton caught it and stepped on first to retire him. One strike. Now the set by Tudor and he'll check the runner Kemp back to the bag at first. Tudor ready to pitch now as he sets and again throws the first, but Kemp is back in time. Yankees are batting in the bottom half of the fifth inning, and they are in a scoreless game at the moment with the Red Sox. Here's the set, the luck, and the pitch, and a strike on the inside corner to Smalley. He takes it for strike two, one ball and two strikes. Outfield playing Smalley straight away. The infield, of course, double play depth. They'd like to get something on the ground here. The Yankees have a base runner. Kemp at first. There's one out, and Tudor again will check the runner back to the bag. Again, the left-hander Tudor as he looks to the runner. Here's the pitch. Smalley swings and bounces one on the right side. It's a base hit. Off at second base is Kemp, and he'll hold there as Evans is up with the ball very quickly and makes a lob throw into Remy into the infield. Back-to-back -back base hits by Kemp and Smalley, and the Yankees have runners at first and second. One away, and Andre Robertson will be the hitter. That ball was just past a diving Jerry Remy at second base. And Andre stepping in. Robertson 0 for 1. He lined out to left fielder Jim Rice his first time up. So the Yankees threaten to take the lead here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Two on, one down. 
And the pitch. Robertson swings and fouls a fastball back and out of play. And strike one to count. Andre Robertson, the batter. Steve Kemp is at second base. And Roy Smalley behind him at first base. And the Yankees and the Red Sox in a scoreless game. Yankees have all the hits on the board. They have four. The Red Sox are still looking for their first hit off of Dave Rigetti. Now the set to look. And here's the Tudor pitch. Andre swings and fouls another fastball off to the upper deck off to the right. And the count is no balls and two strikes to Andre Robertson. Tudor ready as he checks the runners and the curve is wide. It's one ball and two strikes to count. The Yankees had two on in the first inning. Uh, Campanera has opened the game with a single for the Yankees and then stole second base. Winfield walk and with two on, uh, Pinella lined out sharply to Hoffman the shortstop. He turned it into an unassisted double play. Erasing Campanera's bounding ball and a base hit. It's the left, and Kemp is going to score, and the Yankees will have the early lead here. So, Steve Kemp scores on an Andre Robertson hit to left, and the Yankees lead it one to nothing. Smalley stops at second base. Yankees now have five hits in the game, and that's RBI number 14 on the year for Andre Robertson. Well, the Yankees come up with three straight hits, all of them singles, and they have the first run in the game. They lead it one to nothing, and here's Campaneris, who is two for two. And the pitch, a fastball high and wide, one ball and no strikes. Campaneris singled the left in the first inning. And then looped a single into right center in the third inning. Smalley at second, Robertson at first, and still one out. Mattingly on deck. Here's the set by Tudor, pitch to Campanaris. Inside ball two and two balls and no strikes. Kemp's base hit was a low liner that skipped off the glove of first baseman Dave Stableton. Smalley's hit passed a diving Jerry Remy into right field, and Robertson's hit. On the left side, past Hoffman and Boggs. Inside ball three. Three balls and no strikes to count to Bert Campanaris. Now, Tudor is in danger now of loading the bases here with only one out in the inning. Three balls, no strikes to count to Campanaris. Thus far, Tudor has walked only one in the game. That was Winfield back in the first inning. And the pitch. That's a strike on the inside corner. And it's three balls and one strike the count. Well, the Red Sox have Bob Stanley loosening up now in the bullpen. Now the set. Here's the 3-1 delivery as Tudor looks to the runners and pitches. Strike two at the letters on the outside corner. And a full count now, three and two. So Campanaris takes... A pair of strikes and a count now three balls and two strikes. Smalley, the lead runner at second, Robertson behind him at first. Ready to work. Left hander Tudor sets and pitches. High ball full. That'll load the bases. Kevin Ayers is on at first. Robertson moves to second. Smalley is on to third. And the batter is going to be Don Mattingly. Well, here in the bottom of the fifth, the Yankees have the lead at one to nothing. Andre Robertson's base hit the left scored Steve Kemp from second. And the threat continues with the bases loaded, only one out. And the batter, Don Mattingly, is 0 for 2 in the game. Fly to left, popped up. Second baseman Remy caught the ball and it ended up being a double play. And the pitch. It's high. One ball and no strikes. Curveball just missed upstairs to the left-handed hitting Mattingly.
One ball, no strikes. Base is loaded. Lead runner at third, Roy Smalley. Full wind by Tudor. And here's the pitch. Mattingly swings and fouls it back to the upper deck. And a counted one ball and one strike. Winfield due up next. Everybody at a base for the Yankees. As Tudor works to the line and the 1-1 to Mattingly. The curve is in for a strike and it is now 1-2. and two. Mattingly takes a curve ball and one ball, two strikes a count. Mattingly steps back in. Tudor checks the lead runner, Smalley, at third. Here is the 1-2 delivery. Swing and a miss, strike three. Got him on a breaking pitch out of the strike zone. Mattingly is down. Strikeout number one in the game for left-hander John Tudor. And now here's the confrontation between John Tudor and Dave Winfield as Winfield steps in. Now Winfield, three RBIs in the series, a two-run homer on Saturday night. And he picked up an RBI and a ground out yesterday. 0 for 1 this afternoon. He walked in the first inning. And he flied to center fielder Tony Armas in the fourth. Tudor to the line, and here's the pitch to Winfield. Inside a ball in 1 0. And Tudor's got to be careful here. He can't afford to work too far behind Winfield. He has no place to put him. The count one ball and no strikes. Smalley at third, Robertson at second, Cabaneras at first. And the pitch. That's a strike at the letters on the inside corner, and the count is even at one and one. Winfield took it. One ball, one strike. Tudor trying to work out of a jam here in the fifth. Base is loaded in two away. Winfield trying to help the Yankees break the game open. They lead one to nothing. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike two, and it's one and two. Boy, Winfield had a cut at that fastball. Now Tudor has the advantage. Pitcher ahead of hitter at one ball and two strikes. Winfield has to be more protective of the plate. Outfield straight away for Winfield. They play him deep. And the line by Tudor. Here's the delivery. Popped it up. Foul ground. Newman coming back. He may have room. It's out of play. Seven, eight rows up in the box seats off to the left. Winfield is still in there at one ball and two strikes. Yankees get the first run of the game on a base hit from Andre Robertson. Scored Steve Kemp from second. Now Winfield steps out and gets back in. He'll take his time. John Tudor standing tall on the mound. He's ready to work. Here's the one-two delivery. The pitch. Swing. And a missed strike three. Struck him out on a fastball. John Tudor really rears back and gets Winfield. Strikes out two in the inning. His first two in the game. At the end of five, the Yankees won. The Red Sox nothing.
$250 Getty Gasoline Certificate. The winner is Paul Shepard of McClellanville, South Carolina. Shore Tire Company, located in Bricktown. A little bit later on during the ball game, so don't go away. Our fourth of July celebration will continue. Well, the Yankees have the lead at one to nothing as the Red Sox come to bat in the top half of the sixth inning. A ground ball single on the left side that just made it through past Boggs and Hoffman and into left field, scoring Kemp from second base and the game's lone run thus far. Today's Martin Brothers lucky number is 493. Let me repeat the number, 493. If you are today's lucky number winner, go to your nearest Martin Brothers location with your card, and you'll receive a $50 gift certificate. Dave Rigetti working to Jeff Newman, the leadoff batter for the Red Sox here in the top half of the sixth inning. And one to nothing, the Yankees ahead. And the first pitch to Newman is outside a ball, one ball to no strikes. Newman struck out swinging in the third and is 0 for 1 in the game. Swing and a foul. This one will reach to the upper deck. Bounces off the facing and back down onto the screen. And a ball and a strike now to Jeff Newman. Red Sox and Yankees won't meet again until September. On the 19th, the uh, Yankees have a series at Boston. Here's a fly to right. Kemp is there, and he's got it for the up. And there's one down. The leadoff batter, Jeff Newman, retired, and Glenn Hoffman will step in. And the Red Sox have their final appearance here at Yankee Stadium the very next week, September 27th through the 29th. All right, here's Hoffman, the number nine batter in the order. 0 for 1. He struck out his first time up. And a high fastball. It's one ball and no strikes. Dave Rigetti. First eight outs, seven of them were strikeouts. And the pitch. Curve popped in the air. Weininger coming back, but it'll be out of play. It's on the screen, and the count is a ball and a strike now to Hoffman. Yankees and the Red Sox final game of the four game series. The Yankees won the opener on Friday night 12 to 8. Sox came back with wins Saturday night and yesterday afternoon. Kerr fouled to the upper deck off to the right out of play. And the count is one ball and two strikes to Glenn Hoffman. <laughs> Yankees have a run on five hits and no errors. The Red Sox no runs no hits and they've made one error. Rigetti pitching here in the sixth inning. One down and nobody on. Rigetti erects to the line, and here's the pitch. Just missed with a breaking pitch on the outside corner. And it's a 2-2 count now to Glenn Hoffman. Jerry Remy do up next. It's hitters 8-9-1 and one in the order to face Rigetti here in the top half of the sixth inning. Here's the line and the 2-2 delivery. Hoffman swings, loops one into shallow left. Tough play, Swally back, and he makes a running grab. Roy Smalley running away from the infield and into shallow left over the head catch to retire Huffman two down in the inning and the batter is going to be Jerry Remy who has struck out and grounded to first. Well, I see they have a rain and wind delay in Detroit now with the Tigers Orioles game. And Detroit is leading that game by a, uh, excuse me, Baltimore is leading by a 5-4 to four score. Todd Cruz has hit a home run for uh, Baltimore. He's helped them since coming over from Seattle. Strike one to count to Remy, and here's the pitch. A slider outside, and it is one and one. Rigetti has not pitched many sliders this afternoon. It's been mostly fastball and curveball. 
And he was using the curveball very effectively in the early innings. He struck out Evans and Hoffman on excellent breaking pitches. Real good curveballs. Here's the 1 1 delivery. Swing and a miss and a high fastball. Remy went out of a went after a pitch out of the strike zone. But that's been a, a very typical Rigetti pitch here today. That one really fired in there by Rigetti. He's had some kind of fastball this afternoon. So it's 1 2 the count to Remy. Two down, nobody on. The Red Sox batting here in the sixth inning, trailing 1 to nothing. Remy swings and fouls a fastball to the upper deck off to the left, and it'll be a ball and two strikes still to the left handed hitter. Winfield in center field is not playing Remy as uh, pronounced as Mumphrey has been in earlier games of this series. And Davis shaded toward left center. Here's a swing and a high pop to the shortstop. Third baseman Campanaris waving off Smalley now, and Campy makes the grab. And the cut of the infield, that's going to be all for Remy and the Sacks here in the sixth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. We're getting now in the four of the six innings that he's pitched, retiring the side in order. At the end of five and a half, the Yankees won and the Red Sox nothing. Yankee baseball fans, now you can get your own official Yankee t-shirt and a special New York Yankee offer from Arnold Soft Sandwich Rolls. See packages at your favorite Arnold grocer for details and step up to quality at Food Town with Arnold Rolls and a full variety of your favorite fixings for picnics and barbecues, including Frankfurter's fresh ground meat, salads, pickles, cold cuts, charcoal, soda, and paper products. For warm weather eating, step up to quality with your favorite foods at Food Town the super supermarket. Well, we go now to the bottom half of the sixth inning. The Yankees holding a one to nothing lead, and the leadoff batter will be Lou Pinella. Tell you, it's a hot day for Steve Palermo, the plate umpire, this afternoon. Ball players, of course. Going through the paces here in the uh, hot afternoon, 94 degrees at game time. That plate umpire, he's got as tough a job as anybody in the heat of the day. See, Palermo was over to the dugout, getting a cool glass of water in between innings. Perhaps that refreshes him some. All right, here's Pinella to lead it off now as the Yankees come to bat. This being the uh, bottom half of the sixth inning. Pinella was out on a uh, line drive his first time up and then fly to left. Deep fly ball that Rice caught at the warning track. Second time up in the fourth inning. 0 for 2 in the game. Pinella had an opportunity at a low liner right up the middle and uh, Hoffman made a very good play. He moved to his left, caught it, and then doubled off Captain Harris at second base. Pinella swings. Here's a high fly, deep center field. Harris is back. Back, back, and got it. Warning track in deep center. That ball is normally caught back there, Bill White. Yeah, Armas gets a good jump on the ball. There's some uh, question as to whether or not he might be able to play center field, but he certainly has not embarrassed himself. He's done an excellent job in this series. So Lou Pinella takes Tony Armas to the warning track in dead away center. Hit the ball over 400 feet. But it's nothing more than a long out here at Yankee Stadium, and there's... One away. Here's Don Baylor, who is 0 for 2. Fly to left, fly to center. And the pitch down low, and one ball, no strikes. Yankees have five hits in the game, two for Campanaris. And then they had uh, consecutive singles by Kemp, Smalley, and Robertson. 
That produced the game's lone run in the fifth inning. Baylor swings, fouls a fastball to the upper deck, and it's a two-strike count now. Don Baylor. Following Baylor will be Butch Weiniger. Here's the pitch. High blast, deep left field, way back, way back. Touch them all, Don Baylor. Home run number nine on the air for Baylor. To the left field seats, and the Yankees lead it by a two to nothing score. That's a Getty Gunner for Don Baylor. It's the Yankees' sixth home run of this series. And a two to nothing lead. Got a fastball and lined it into the left field seats. Batter now is Weiniger, and the pitch to him is a strike on the outside corner, and it's no balls and one strike. Red Sox have nine homers in the series. They are homerless thus far today. A ball and a strike to count to Weiniger. Butch batting and 0 for 2 in the game. Reached in an air and popped to the second baseman, Remy. Down low, 2 and 1 in the count. Six hits in the game for the Yankees now. And the pitch. That's high, three and one. Yankees now have hit 80 home runs. They're playing in their 76th game today. And they've hit 40 at home and 40 on the road. Fly to left. It's back and it's deep. Rice is right at the wall and makes the grab. Good catch. I don't know if he took a home run away from Weiniger or not, but he made a good grab. He did make a good catch. He went back to the wall and leaped and uh, caught the, it would have been high off the wall. Rice probably plays uh, as deep a left field as you'll find uh, here at this ballpark. He will not allow anything over his head going to be out of the ballpark. And Bob Stanley gets up and starts throwing again in the Red Sox bullpen. All right, here is uh, Steve Kemp. Kemp swings on the first pitch and hits one on one hop to Stapleton. He knocks it down and then flips to the pitcher Tudor covering for the out, and the inning is over. That's going to be all now for the Yankees here in the sixth inning. If they get a run on a hit, the Hummer by Baylor. No errors and nobody left. And at the end of six full, the Yankees lead the Red Sox two to nothing. seated in the bleachers and general admission seats. We are the winners. When their numbers are announced, report to the Yankee office lobby located behind home plate in lobby four. Please listen to the winners. General admission, section 21, row N, as in Nelly, seat number 20, section 2. Row P, as in Peter, seat number six, section eight. Row W, as in Washington, seat number ten. And for those of the bleachers, section forty-three. Row G, as in George, seat number twenty. Section 39, row L, as in row, seat number 28. Section 37, row P, as in Peter, seat number 9. Section 55, row K. Let's take a 10-second Lon Jeans timeout on the New York Yankee Radio Network. Lon Jeans is the official timekeeper of the 1984 Olympics in Los Angeles. Row 9, row G, seat number 21. Well, Dave Rigetti with a 2-0 lead going into the seventh inning. He'll face 
fellow who right now is the toughest out in baseball. That's Wade Boggs, then Jim Rice, and Tony Armas. John? All right, Bill. Boggs is 0 for 2 today. He took a called third strike his first time up, and he flied to center fielder Dave Winfield in the fourth inning. He hit the ball very well in the fourth, and Winfield backtracking made an over the head grab on a line drive. First pitch is high for ball. One ball, no strikes to count to Boggs. Hitters 2, 3, and 4 in the order for the Red Sox. They trail in the game 2 to nothing. They've been out hit 6 to nothing. And a curve is across, and it's a ball and a strike. Dave Rigetti ready to work to the uh, left handed hitting Boggs. Here's the line by Rigetti in the pitch. That one's way high. And off the glove of Weiniger, back behind home plate, two and one to count. Fastball got away from Rigetti. Winfield shaded toward left center for the left handed hitting Boggs. Campanaris is even with the bag at third. And Smalley is over to his right at shortstop. Here's the line by Rigetti now in the 2 1 delivery. Check swing, but he made contact with a foul tip, and it's 2 2. Well, Rigetti got a break there. That pitch was out of the strike zone. But Boggs could not draw the bat back in time, made some contact, and it's two balls and two strikes. We're in the seventh, and Dave Rigetti pitching to Wade Boggs, the leadoff batter. Two strike delivery. Another check swing and a foul back and out of play. That pitch was out of the strike zone. Again, Boggs having trouble getting the bat out of the way. So the 2-2 count holds to Wade Boggs. Here's the line now as Rigetti rocks and fires. Curve is hit in the air to center. Winfield is back. He's there and he's got it. One down. Another well stroked ball by Wade Boggs, but to the glove of Dave Winfield in center field. And here's Jim Rice. Walked in the first inning and flying to right field in the fourth inning. Rigetti has walked two, he struck out eight. And he has not fanned anybody since the first out of the fifth inning. Struck out Dwight Evans. Working to the Red Sox here in the seventh. Two to nothing, Yankees lead. Fastball high, one ball and no strikes. And to the line, here's the 1 0 delivery. Wide, two balls and no strikes. Left-hander Rigetti rocks to the line, and here's the pitch. That's low and inside. Gets away from Weiniger, and Rigetti is way behind Rice now at 3-0. and Jim Rice will be dressing out for the All-Star game on Wednesday night. Comiskey Park in Chicago. He is not one of the uh, starting outfielders. Here is the 3-0 delivery. He had the green light. Swings and misses and three and one. Fastball. Three balls, one strike to count. Here's the line now by the left-hander Rigetti in the pitch. That's high ball four. Although I guess he might start with Reggie Jackson uh, out now. Harvey Keene will have a decision to make and I don't see why he wouldn't start Rice the way he's been hitting. Well, I don't see why he wouldn't have started the first place. That's he's right. having a better year than a lot of the people and probably everybody who is starting. Maybe that's why the American League hasn't won in quite a while. They have a popularity contest. <laughs> the other guys are sending players out there. Mm -hmm. Well the uh, popular vote went to Reggie Jackson, Dave Winfield and Fred Lynn. The starting outfielders. Swing and a foul by Armas and out of play, and it's uh, no balls and one strike. One down, one on. Rice becomes a base runner for the second time in the game. He's walked both times in the first and seventh innings now. 
And the only other base runner for the Red Sox in the game, Reed Nichols, on a fifth inning walk. He was picked off trying to steal. Arma swings and misses, strike two. And Rigetti's ahead at no balls and two strikes. Well, all the stars in the major leagues will be returning to the city and ballpark where it all started in the Midsummer's Classic, the All Star Game at Comiskey Park on Wednesday. First game played in 1933 in Chicago's Comiskey Park. Here's the 0-2 delivery, a pop-up foul. It'll reach to the upper deck off to the right, and the count holding at no balls and two strikes. <laughs> Waiting to hit next will be Dwight Evans. Rigetti working from a set position. Rice at first and one down. Infield double play depth. Here's the set. And the Rigetti pitch. Bounding ball foul to the Red Sox dugout off to the left and the count holding at 0 and 2 to Armas. Yankees got a run in the fifth. Robertson singled home Kemp. A run in the sixth on a home run by Don Baylor. Baylor's ninth of the year. So Dave Rigetti gone all the way, as has his mound opponent John Tudor. Sets and O2s, and it's high. One ball and two strikes to count. At first, Jim Rice. Now the luck. Left-hander Rigetti delivers high and wide, 2-2 two, two the count. It appears that Rigetti still has the same zip on his fastball here in the seventh inning, but he just doesn't seem to have the uh, location that he had in the early goings. Let's not forget the uh, temperature here, uh, John Gordon, 94 degrees. At game time, I'm sure that's taking its toll a bit on Dave Rigetti. First two innings when he struck out five of the six outs. He had some kind of location. Hit a bounding ball to short, should be two. Smalley to Robertson one. Out the relay. That's a double play, and the inning is over. So Rigetti induces the double play ball off the bat of Tony Armas, and the twin killing retires the Sox in the seventh. No run. Well, we go to the bottom of the seventh, and the Yankees holding a two to nothing lead. And a record. Setting performance in baseball last night, Bill, out on the West Coast, the uh, Texas Rangers scored 12 runs in the top of the 16th inning and won the game 16 to 4 over Oakland, their fourth win in a row. And it was the most runs by one club in an extra inning, setting a record that was held by the 1928 New York Yankees. They had scored uh, 11 runs in an extra inning game against the Detroit Tigers back in 1928 on the 26th of July. Minnesota did it against Oakland in 1969. Here's Tudor now to the right-handed hitting Royce Smalley. It's a high fly to shallow left. Rice is playing deep, running in, and makes the catch for the out. Can you imagine scoring 12 runs in an extra inning game? <laughs> That's quite a few. It's quite a few runs in any inning. That's right. Extra inning or within the ball game. Quite a comeback for Oakland if they had won that one. Smalley is out on the opening pitch from Tudor on a fly to left, and here is Andre Robertson, who has the uh, game's first RBI. He singled across day Steve Kemp back in the fifth inning, and is one for two in the game. Yankees have six hits, and of the six, five of them singles, and a home run from Don Baylor. He entered in the uh, sixth inning with nobody on his ninth homer of the season. Andre swings and lofts a foul down the Right field line, this one will go into the seats. A ball and a strike to Andre Robertson. Yankees got a run in the fifth, a run in the sixth. They lead two to nothing. And we're in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Here's the 1-1 uh, delivery. Andre swings and fouls it off his uh, left leg. He appears to be all right. Stung momentarily, and it is one and two the count. <laughs> the 
Yankees open a three game series against the Kansas City Royals following the All Star break. And they meet uh, the Royals at Kansas City Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday afternoon. Then they play at the Metrodome Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday uh, against the Twins. And that will be the road trip. Pitches down low, 2 2. They count to Andre Robertson. Return home here for a 10 day and 10 game road uh, home stand against the uh, Texas Rangers. Swinging a fly down the right field line. Here's Evans toward the foul line. He's there. Makes a grab for the out. Two down in the inning, and the batter is going to be Bert Campanaris. Play uh, four games against the Rangers, three games against Minnesota, and four games against Kansas City. Be home for 11 days and 11 games. Campanaris two for two in the game. He walked his last time up. Yankees had a big threat going in the fifth. They got their first run on the hit by Robertson, and Campanaris walked to load the bases with one out. But Tudor really bore down and struck out Mattingly and Winfield. Campanaris fouls one to the upper deck and the ball and a strike to count to Campy. Two to nothing Yankees lead. We're in the bottom half of the seventh and here's John Tudor now to Bert Campanaris. He pitches high and it's two and one. Two away, nobody on. Smalley the leadoff batter is flying to left and Robertson is followed with a fly to right. Here's the 2 1 delivery. Andre uh, Campanaris takes it high for ball three and three and one to count. Raleigh, Reggetti, and Guidry are the uh, three scheduled pitchers for the Yankees in the Kansas City series. Campanaris swings and misses and three two the count. Larry Gurr, who is uh, considered to be a Yankee killer, will be uh, pitching against Raleigh on Friday night. Campy swings, loops one to right. Here's Evans coming on. He's there and makes a catch. And Campanaris is going to be the third out of the Yankees' seventh. Three up, three down, and uh, that's all for the Yankees in the seventh inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. Now through seven innings of play, it's the Yankees two and the Red Sox nothing. Seven full innings of play. The Yankees have two runs, six hits. They've played airless baseball. And the Boston Red Sox, no runs on no base hits, and they've made one error. And here in the top of the eighth inning, Dave Rigetti will be pitching to Dwight Evans, Reed Nichols, and Dave Stapleton. Congratulations. Yankees leading 2 0. They got a run in the fifth, and they added another one in the sixth on a solo home run by Don Baylor. Baylor's ninth home run of the year and his 33rd run batted in.
So Dave Rigetti has struck out Evans twice. Evans was the last strikeout recorded by Rigetti back in the fifth inning. And Evans also struck out in the second. Day with a total of eight. And he has walked three. So Evans stands in. Evans batting 230, 15 home runs, 39 runs batted in. And here's the first pitch to Evans. Fastball hit down the right field line, going into the corner is Kemp. In the corner near the line, leaps up and makes a catch. Steve Kemp going all the way to the wall. Ball looked like it was in foul territory. Getting ready to go into the stands, and Steve Kemp leaped up, made the catch, and first base umpire Rick Reed all the way down in the corner with Kemp made the out call. So Kemp reaching into the first row of the seats down in right field makes a put out in foul territory. And that'll bring on Reed Nichols. Nichols has slid to right field and he's walked, so he's 0 for 1 in the game. Bob Shirley and Gossage get up now in the Yankee bullpen. Yankees have a 2 0 lead playing the top half of the eighth inning. Nichols takes a strike on the outside corner. Bert Campanaris, the third baseman, he's uh, in even with the bag at third. Mattingly shortened up just a little bit at first base. Red Sox have left just one runner on in this ball game. That was in the first inning when Remy and Boggs struck out, Rice walked, and Armas struck out. The one strike pitch, low, it's one and one on Reed Nichols. On deck is Dave Stable in the first baseman. Getting a little overcast now here at the stadium. 1-1 one, one pitch to Nichols. Swung on, hit the center field. Winfield moving back, backpedaling, and makes a catch. Two outs. And with each put out, these Yankee fans get up and they give uh, Dave Rigetti a standing O. Here's Dave Stable in the first baseman. Stable and a struck out and popped up. He's 0 for 2. Two men out, nobody on. Yankees ahead, 2 nothing in the top of the eighth. Brigetti trying to win his tenth. And the pitch popped up right side in foul territory. Don Mattingly calling near the top of He's got it. And they're two out. That's it. That's three outs. Three up, three down at the end of seven and a half innings of play. The Yankees, two, Boston, nothing. American Tire with two convenient locations in Springfield, New Jersey. Take a look at the Yankees scoreboard brought to you by members only, makers of outerwear and spectator wear. Night games tonight Seattle at Toronto, Milwaukee at Cleveland, Kansas City at California, and Texas at Oakland. In the top of the ninth, Chicago batting. And right now, the uh, White Sox are leading 10 to 6 over Minnesota. Walker and Kuntz have homered in the game. Walker for the White Sox, Kuntz for the Twins. And the wind and rain delay in the fifth inning. Baltimore is leading Detroit 5-4. Todd Cruz is homered for Baltimore. National League, Mets and Phillies play tonight. First of two, Pittsburgh beat St. Louis 7-2. To 
In the second game, Cardinals lead it eight to one at the end of five. First of two, Montreal ends Chicago's win streak of six to three. Montreal beating the Cubs. Second game just underway. Atlanta at Cincinnati. Uh, Los Angeles at Houston, San Francisco at San Diego later on. Bill? Pitches one strike on Mattingly. He loops one to shortstop, backing up as a shortstop. Hoffman glasses down. He makes the catch, and there's one away. We're in the ninth inning, bottom of the eighth inning, and the Yankees leading Boston 2 0, one out, nobody on. All right, the Yankees scoreboard brought to you by members only, members only, changing the look of America with outerwear and spectator wear. And the styles to fit your style to fit to go with every move you make. So make it members only. Make something happen for you. All right, John. Here's Dave Winfield. He has walked, fly to center, and struck out. Dave is 0 for 2 in the game. Brigetti, by the way, in the ninth inning will have to pitch to Jeff Newman, Glenn Hoffman, and Jerry Remy with a 2 0 lead. Pitch to Winfield on the outside corner, strike one. And Winfield takes inside one and one. And Tudor's pitch is fouled back by Winfield and the ball flies, the bat flies out of Winfield's hands. One and two, just missed the home plate umpire. Steve Palermo, the count, one ball and two strikes on Dave Winfield. With one out, nobody on, Yankees up, two nothing. Two runs, six hits, no errors for the Yankees. Red Sox, no runs, no hits, one error. And we're in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Lou Pinella's on deck. Winfield taking his time getting back in the box. Now the one two swung on and fouled back upon the screen. And John Tudor who has pitched an excellent game for the Red Sox gets a new baseball. Left hander John Henry Johnson and Luis Saponte a right hander warming up for the Sox. Tudor's one two to Winfield. Swung on, high chopper short, backing up Hoffman. He's got a long throw, and ball is dropped at first base by Stable, and Winfield is safe. And the Winfield gets a base hit. So Winfield on at first base with one away, and that'll bring on Lou Pinella. Pinella's 0 for 3 in the game. He lined into a double play in the first inning, fly to left field in the fourth, and fly deep to center field in the sixth inning. Lou batting 315, two home runs and 13 runs batted in. Moving on deck is Don Baylor. A staple and holding Winfield at first base with one away as Tudor sets. And the pitch to Pinella, pitch out, but Winfield was not going. It's ball. Yankees are trying to tie the series at two games apiece. They won the open. The Red Sox won the next two. Off, chiefly off the bat of Jim Rice, their fine left fielder. Here's a set by Tudor. He'll go to first base. Winfield gets back easily. Now Pinella doing a little landscaping around the batter's box on the right side. Time called by a home plate umpire Steve Palermo. Now we're ready. The set by Tudor. And the pitch to Pinella. Swung on pop foul coming back toward uh, the Yankee dugout. Newman's back there and reaches in and I believe he's got it. Palermo fell down and the throw down to second base is not in time. Palermo fell down. He's hurt. Steve Palermo hustling back with that pop up as Newman reached in the stands and made the catch. Palermo right with him hit the retaining wall. He's down. And after the catch, Winfield went on to second base. And everybody's down around uh, Steve Palermo, just under us. And looking in from center field would be just to the left of the Yankee 
dugout. A fine catch by Jeff Newman. He reached way in, made the catch, fell in, came out. And when he came out, he not only threw uh, the baseball down to second base, but he had a fan's hat. Palermo, going running with Newman, slipped down and slipped into the retaining wall. He did not see Newman make the catch, but a fine grab by Jeff Newman. And Palermo is still down. Billy Martin down there along with the other umpires. Gene Monahan, the Yankee trainer there. Jeff Newman, who made the catch. Don Baylor and Lou Pinella, and also John Tudor. And we certainly hope that Steve Palermo is uh, not hurt. And Palermo's up now. Ken Nigro, the Yankee publicist, has just given us the uh, total attendance for this afternoon's game, 41,077. And for the four-game series with the Red Sox, a total of 147-37. So Palermo's up, and Jerry Newdecker and Al Clark and Rick Reed escorting him toward the Yankee dugout. I think they're trying to talk Steve into leaving the ball game. It's hot out there. Steve, of course, wants to stay in. He's going to stay in. And now Pinella saying the ball wasn't caught cleanly. Lou Pinella, after Palermo says, hey, I'm going to stay here an umpire. Pinella now wants to discuss that catch by Jeff Newman. And it's a put out. So Newman makes a fine catch. That's out number two. Winfield goes to second base after the catch. And Pinella has just broken his bat. He's quite upset, but it was a fine catch by Newman. Ball just eluded uh, an outstretched arm of a fan there. And Newman made the catch cleanly. So Palermo is going to stay in this ball game. Looks like he might have injured his left wrist. Plus he got banged up pretty hard against the wall. And now they're going to put Don Baylor on intentionally. And the pitch to uh, Butch Weiniger. Yankees lead 2-0. Winfield is down at second base. There are two outs. And Baylor will be intentionally passed here. That's Steve Palermo showing a lot of moxie. Frank Messer staying in this ball game. Of course, he might realize the situation. Yes, I have to agree with that. Here's ball two on Baylor. And here's ball three. Baylor, we mentioned, had homered off John Tudor his last time up. And here's ball four. Baylor intentionally passed to bring on Butch Weiniger. Weiniger 0 for 3. Got on on an error by the third baseman, Wade Boggs. That was in the second inning. Popped to a second base in the fifth and fly to left field in the sixth. So excellent speed on the base pass for the Yankees. Winfield on at second base. Baylor on at first with two down. Tudor delivers to Weininger, and it's a called strike. Yankees two runs, seven hits. The Red Sox no runs, no hit. One error in the ball game led by the Sox third baseman Boggs. The one strike pitch to Weininger. It's outside, one and one. Last no hitter pitched by Yankee back in 1956, fifth game of the World Series. The only perfect game in World Series history. Don Larson against the Dodgers. Throw the first base after the pitch was wide, and Baylor dives back in. He's safe. 1951, Allie Reynolds pitched two no hitters beat Cleveland on July 12th and Boston on September 28th. There's the 2 1 to Weininger. And it's a call strike two and two. Well, that second one, Bill, the one where uh, Yogi Berra did not catch the final out, foul pop, and the next pitch, same play, and he did catch it. Is that Ted Williams batting? Ted Williams batting. First game of a doubleheader. 
Here's the 2 2 runners going, swung on and fouled back by Weininger, and the count remains 2 and 2. Winfield will have to go back to second, Baylor back to first. In 1936, Monty Pearson pitched a no hitter against Cleveland. 1923, Sam Jones beat Philadelphia. 1917, George Mogridge beat Boston. And in 1910, Tommy Hughes beat Cleveland. Looks like they're picking on Cleveland. <laughs> Outside the Weininger three and two. So the runners will be moving on this three two pitch. There they go in the pitch. Just missed outside. Newman thought it was a strike. So did Tudor. Ball four bases loaded. Winfield at third. Baylor down at second. Weiniger on at first. And the batter, Steve Kemp. Kemp is one for three against Tudor. Twice he's bounced to first base. He's also got a base hit off Stapleton's glove and scored on a single by Andre Robertson for the game's first run in the fifth inning. Yankees got their second run when Don Baylor hit his ninth home run of the year with nobody on in the sixth. Here's a first pitch to Kemp. Line base hit will go in the corner right field. Winfield scores easily. Baylor will score. And Weiniger will hold at third base. The Yankees now lead 4 0. And I believe that's going to be all for John Tudor. Ralph Hawk started out of the dugout, went back. Now Ralph is coming out. Big hit for Steve Kemp. A two run single giving the Yankees a 4 0 lead. So let's take a 10 second Lon Jeans timeout on the New York Yankee Radio Network. Lon Jeans is the official timekeeper of the 1984 Olympics in Los Angeles. Well, there's a break in the action here in the bottom of the eighth with the Yankees leading Boston by a score of 4 0. Stanley, the new Red Sox pitcher, he comes in with runners at first and third and two down and pitches to Roy Smalley, who takes a strike on the outside corner. Stanley, of course, the ace of the uh, white red, uh, red Sox bullpen. He's making his 32nd appearance. He's won five, lost four, 16 saves. And he backs Smalley off inside with the fastball. It's one and one. Big hit by Steve Kemp as he singled into the right field corner, driving in Winfield and Baylor. 1-1 one, one pitch, sliced foul in the mezzanine section off to the left. One ball, two strikes on Smalley. Smalley is one for three in the game, a single to right field back in the fifth inning. Now Stanley working quickly, deals a breaking ball. It's high, two and two.
Weininger off third. Kemp off first. Here's a 2 2 to Smalley. Bounced off first base. It's a fair ball. Stapleton has it, and he'll tag, tag the bag and makes a put out unassisted. But the Yankees pick up two more runs on just two base hits, and they leave two men on base. And at the end of eight, the Yankees lead the Red Sox 4 0. A cargo plane was cruising east at 19,000 feet when the door slid open and a spinet piano exited. Mr. and Mrs. Miles Winnegar were deep in sleep when the spinet made an unauthorized landing in their dining room. Fortunately, the Winnegars had Sentry Plane Talk Home Insurance, which showed they had inflation-proof protection from fire, theft, storms, and flying pianos. If you own a home, call Sentry, where all's well, even when all isn't. to the ninth inning. Dave Rigetti will work to Jeff Newman, Glenn Hoffman, and Jerry Remy. And what a 4th of July afternoon here at Yankee Stadium, Bill White. A crowd of 41,077 on hand. And the Yankees have passed the million mark in seasonal attendance. Now with 1,009,156. And what an afternoon for Dave Rigetti. This could be a memorial afternoon, a memorable afternoon for this youngster on Memorial Day. That's on the 4th of July, rather. Wait Fourth a minute. Fourth. I'm Fourth. getting upset. <laughs> I hope he doesn't get upset. First pitch to Newman. Swing and a miss on that high fastball. Strike one. Well, Palermo's hanging in there, too, behind the plate. Get yeah, that. he doesn't feel good. Yeah, I think his knee hurts him, his wrist hurts him, but he's staying in there. Brigetti kicks and deals. Newman takes high of all. Brigetti has used uh, mainly fastballs this afternoon. I believe Bill watching some of the game from the stands downstairs for the giveaways. One one pitch. High. Two balls and one strike. Now the key Frank is not to try too hard. And just in case he does try too hard the Yankees have Gossage warming up in the bullpen. I think Bob Shirley's behind him also throwing. That's just Gossip. The 2 1 pitch to Newman. High and away, ball three. Weininger probably should just calm him down a little bit. Forgetty has walked three, struck out eight. Swing and a miss. Three and two on Newman. Newman has struck out and flied to right. I don't think anybody has left this ballpark. Three two pitch to Newman foul back in the crowd. Well I know one who might have <laughs> might be on the bridge. <laughs> Ira Getty looks to Weiniger starts the motion the kick the pitch walked in pitch just inside. That'll be walk number four allowed by Rigetti. You know, Bill White, those two runs the Yankees scored in the bottom half of the eighth, the two runs driven in by Kemp, are mighty, mighty big runs now for Rigetti. Big runs, Frank, uh, because sometimes you tend to, I think, lose sight of the fact that, number one, you want to win the ball game, and number two, uh, whatever other things positive that happen, you, you take them. And certainly, it'll be a big positive thing happening here. 
All right, Glenn Hoffman, the batter, and the breaking ball is over. Strike one. Down at first base, Mattingly backs off, does not hold Newman on. Caponaris in even with a bag at third. Smalley and Robertson double play depth. The outfield spread. The ball foul back into the mezzanine. That could be quite a souvenir for one of the fans. Outfield is spread out, trying to guard all the exits with Hoffman, a spray hitter at the plate. He has struck out and popped up in two trips. The set by Rigetti and the pitch. Swung on and grounded foul. Came in on his hands and he fouled it into the Red Sox dugout. Third base coach Eddie Yost claims the baseball, flips it back to the bat boy. No balls, two strikes. The count on Hoffman. Rigetti struck out three in the first inning, two more in the second, two more in the third, and one in the fifth. He has not struck out a man since he fanned Evans in the fifth. 0 oh, 2 pitch. High with a fastball. One and two. Rigetti has thrown a lot of pitches, but he threw more over the first four or five innings than he has in the later innings. Pitch on the way. Hit on the ground is short. Smalley hand to Robertson out at second. Back to first. Ah, safe at first base. Safe at first. Robertson's throw pulled Manningly off the bag to the right field side. And Hoffman is safe at first base. Now Don tried to keep that toe on the bag, just couldn't. And a good call by the first base umpire Rick Reed. Watched the play all the way. And no argument from the Yankees. That was a Taylor made double play, simply an errant throw by Yankee second baseman Andre Robertson. So there is one out. Hoffman at first. Mattingly again will play behind the runner with left hand hitting Jerry Remy at the plate. Remy has struck out, grounded out, and popped up. Forgetty has his glove off, adjusting his belt or shirt. I think we get he's a little bit disappointed that the double play was not made behind him. Of course, he can't let him uh, let that uh, affect his pitching. Nope. And the pitch to Remy. Bouncing ball right side. Robertson has goes to first out. Advancing to second base. Hoffman. Robertson made the right play. Well, he wanted to make sure he got one sure, and he did that. Listen to these fans now. Well, don't go away. This place may erupt any moment. Wade Boggs, the batter, he has struck out once, fly twice to Winfield in center. And this is the toughest out in baseball today, Frank. This guy has 101 base hits. They play him well around to the left side, although he's a left-hand hitter. He takes a pitch just outside. Well, forget he's got anything left. He better go back and get it here. A runner at second, two outs. Could be the biggest day of Reggetti's career. At the belt, the pitch. Has the plate, knee high, a strike call, one and one. Fans are standing all over the stadium. 41,077 on this 4th of July, urging Reggetti on. The pitch, breaking ball, swung on and missed. Strike two, a ball and two strikes. Reggetti circles around the mound, steps back up on top. Don't tell me he doesn't know it. There's never been a pitcher that did it that did not know it was coming. The one-two pitch. Foul back in the upper deck on the left side. A ball and two strikes, the count to Wade Boggs. Rigetti asks for another baseball and gets it from Steve Palermo. Again circles around the mound to the third base side. Now up to the pitching rubber. Plants the left foot on the slab, looks down to Weidegger. Hiding the ball behind the left hip. The set and the pitch. A ball a little bit high, and it's two and two. The Yankees lead four nothing. Glenn Hoffman is at second base, two outs in the top of the ninth inning. 
and Dave Rigetti on the threshold of making history here at Yankee Stadium. He sets the kick and the pitch. He struck him out. Rigetti has pitched a no-hitter. Dave Rigetti has pitched a no-hitter. He strikes out Boggs for the final out of the ball game. And the Yankees pour on the field to congratulate Dave Rigetti. A no-hitter for Rigetti. Frank, that had not been done since 1956 when Don Larson pitched his perfect game in the World Series against the Brooklyn Dodgers, the then Brooklyn Dodgers. So the first Yankee to pitch a no-hitter since 1956, and this kid, uh, with the temperature in the 90s, richly deserved uh, this big win and the no-hitter. He's waving to the fans. They're all on, they're all on their feet, giving him a standing ovation. A great, a great game by Dave Rigetti. Look at him. You like to see him happy like that. Well, I tell you, if you can't get happy when you pitch a no-hitter, you're never going to be happy in your life. Oh, they're still giving it. They're still standing for Dave Rigetti. He's out in front of the Yankee uh, dugout, waving his cap to the fans. As you mentioned, Frank Messer, 41,077 here, and many of them still here as they are helping Dave Rigetti celebrate his probably greatest moment uh, in, in his baseball career. <laughs> I would have to think it would, it would have to be his greatest moment, Bill. Let's see. I I want to get double checked on the scorecard having been downstairs. I've got four walks given up by Rigetti and nine strikeouts as he ended the ball game as he started it. He struck out the first batter, Jerry Remy, went on to strike out the side in the first inning with a walk to Rice, and he ends the ball game by striking out Wade Boggs for his ninth strikeout in the game. So a no-hitter pitched here at Yankee Stadium by left-hander Dave Rigetti as we witnessed history on this 4th of July, 1983 at Yankee Stadium here in New York. I'll be back with more on wrapping up this game. We'll have our regular post-game shows the final score, the New York Yankees four and the Boston Red Sox nothing. and look at the totals on the ball game for the New York Yankees. Four runs, eight hits, no errors, and uh, seven men left on base. For the Boston Red Sox, no runs, no hits, one error, and two men left on base. Dave Rigetti, the winner, with a no-hitter. His record is 10 and three. It was his fifth win against only two losses, in his career against the Red Sox and the losing pitcher John Tudor whose record evens up at five wins and five losses. Rigetti in pitching his no hitter walked four and struck out nine men in the ball game. The fans are still hanging around. Chuck Mangione, who played our national anthem this afternoon and drew our prize winners, 
has just gone over to put his arms around Rigetti as we view the scene on the dugout steps from our vantage point here in our Yankee radio broadcast booth. We, of course, have John Gordon in the dugout, and he'll be talking to Dave Rigetti just as soon as we possibly can. Of course, Rigetti, the focal point of all the media here at Yankee Stadium. Brian Ferguson will let me know when we're ready to get downstairs and hear from Dave. Let's go back and look at his no-hitter. In the first inning, he struck out Remy and Boggs, walked Rice, and struck out Armas. In the second inning, he retired the side in order. He struck out Evans. Reed Nichols hit a fly ball to right, the opposite field, and he struck out Stapleton. In the third inning, Rigetti struck out Jeff Newman and Glenn Hoffman, and Jerry Remy brought it out to shortstop Smalley. In the fourth inning, two fly balls, box to center, Rice to right. Armas became the first man to pull a ball off Rigetti when he grounded down to third base. In the fifth inning, Rigetti struck out Evans. He walked Nichols, Reed Nichols, and Nichols was picked off, caught stealing, the play going 1-3-6, and Stapleton popped up to second baseman Andre Robertson. In the sixth inning, Jeff Newman, a right-hand hitter, again hit the ball to the opposite field, a fly ball to right, caught by Kemp. Hoffman popped up to shortstop Smalley, and Jerry Remy, left-hand batter, popped up to third baseman Bert Campanaris. In the seventh inning, Wade Boggs flied to center. Rigetti walked Jim Rice for the second time in the game, and that induced Tony Armas to ground into a 6-4-3, or shortstop to second to first, double play. The Red Sox went in order in the eighth inning. Dwight Evans fouled out to Steve Kemp down toward the right field corner. Reed Nichols flied to center, and Dave Stapleton popped up in foul ground to first baseman Don Mattingly. Now in the ninth inning, with the Yankees leading 4-0, Steve Kemp driving in a pair in the bottom half of the eighth, Rigetti walked Jeff Newman leading off the inning. Glenn Hoffman hit a ground ball to shortstop Smalley. It looked like a double play. Smalley to Robertson. They got Newman at second. Robertson's throw to first base pulled Mattingly off the bag, and Hoffman reached. Jerry Remy grounded toward the hole between first and second. Robertson to the glove side came up with the ball and fired to first for the shore out. Hoffman moving to second. And then Wade Boggs, who leads the major leagues in base hits with 101, was the batter who could spoil it for Rigetti, and Rigetti struck him out. His ninth strike out of the ball game, and that is a man-by-man, batter-by-batter recap of Dave Rigetti's no-hitter here at Yankee Stadium this afternoon. The Yankees <coughs> did not really wear John Tudor out. The Red Sox southpaw had allowed only one hit and no runs until the bottom half of the fifth inning. Steve Kemp, an infield hit, moved up on a base hit by Smalley and scored on a base hit by Andre Robertson. I saw walk up and down the base and say myself and said I was too nervous. You know, but Dave, up in the bank, there's no superstition. Down here there is. I thank you. And then Don Baylor in the sixth inning homered to the seats in left field to give the Yankees a 2-0 lead. In the eighth inning with one out, Winfield a hit, two outs, an intentional walk to Baylor, a walk to Weininger, and Steve Kemp ripped a single to right to drive in two more runs, and the Yankees win it 4-0. But the story here at Yankee Stadium is Dave Rigetti. Dave Rigetti, a no-hitter, four walks, nine strikeouts. Well, John Gordon down there in the dugout, a lot of excitement, I know, and you're waiting for Rigetti to come over. All right, Frank, and uh, Dave is coming to us right at this moment. He had to take another curtain call.